Hi, my name is Genesis Funkhauser, and for my oral presentation, I chose The Girl Who Went to the Rich Neighborhood by Rachel Pollock. To give some background information about this author, Rachel Pollock has a lot of influence and in related to the tarot and the occult. She is also one of the main leaders in the women's spirituality movement. Now to get into the story. Through a series of malicious interactions, Rachel Pollock argues that extreme narcissism will ultimately lead to one's death. Now, this can be seen most notably at the end of the story. The protagonist, Rose, sees something very interesting. All around her, the rich people are seen stumbling and falling. They are crying, crawling around the ground like blind people would at the edge of a cliff. One important quote for this was woman, one woman had taken off her furs, her silks, her laces, and spread them all around the ground hide their ugliness. Now, I felt like this directly correlated with the Greek mythology story of Narcissus. And Narcissus, a young shepherd boy is so obsessed with himself that he does not give the time of day to his family, his friends, not anybody around him. One day he is hunting and he sees a pond and he goes for a drink of water. He ends up seeing his own image in the pond. He falls in love with what he sees, falls in, drowns, and ultimately dies. To add to the tragedy, what he saw wasn't even his true self. It wasn't the true image of what was really there. It was a projected reflection of what he wanted to see. It was this distorted reality. And this is the concept I'm trying to convey, especially with the rich people in this story. Their realities are so distorted, they cannot see what is around them. So as Rose is going through the neighborhoods, she encounters different situations. She wants to find the mayor's office. And at one moment in this progress to find the mayor's office, she sees a policeman wearing a gold mask slap an old woman across the face. Now, it made me think, well, what is gold? represent in our society. Well, gold is something that is very valuable. It's a measure of success, wealth, divinity. Having too much could be living a life in excess of luxury, of lavishness. Now, on the other hand, masks cover our features. They are a form of disguise. It's a way for us to put on a false face. To continue with the idea of masks, I found a quote that said, masks like smooth mirrors covered their heads so that the rich people would only see themselves if they happened to glance at a policeman. Now these golden masks allow us to see our reflections. These mirrors, because we are allowed to see our reflections through them, can also be seen as a representation of vanity. They're used to feed this high self-esteem and pride that these people have in this society a very unhealthy amount of self-esteem. Now, when coming to descriptors, the mayor is described very differently than any other character in the story. The mayor looks very small, wearing a white robe. Now, this is interesting in the fact that someone in such a high authority is described to be small. The mayor also has long curved fingernails that curve over the end of his chair. So this got me thinking of what fingernails say about a person. Is this person clean? Is this person dirty? Now he has long curved nasty fingernails. On face value, yes, definitely he is not clean, but this may also reflect his egotistical mannerisms, his selfishness, his narrow-mindedness. Fingernails also represent one's health. If someone were to have blue or purple fingernails, we would often assume that they were sick. I don't think Rachel Pollock is trying to say that this man is sick physically, but mentally, he definitely is. These narcissistic attributes are leaking out of his body. 
as seen with the fingernails. His body is actually manifesting his own mentality. To talk about Rachel Pollock's influences in the tarot and how it relates to this, the protagonist Rose is said to be one of six children. Now, in the tarot, the number six is a major arcana tarot, and it often relates to choices relating to the obligations of the home, of the family, and it's most likely to have a karmic lesson. Now, in this case, the karmic lesson is on narcissism. As Rose is going from neighborhood to neighborhood, she interacts with different individuals. Most notably, she interacts with four old women. These women are represented as the four winds, the north wind, the south wind, the west wind, and the east wind. These winds in the Bible make references to God's judgment. It's a test to see if she is consistent with her principles. These winds also can be seen as angels or messengers of God. It's to ask if Rose is consistent with what she does. Every time she interacts with an old woman, one of the old women, they ask her if she has something to eat. Now Rose herself only has crushed or fallen vegetables that have fallen off the supermarket truck. And although that is all she has, she is constantly giving, even though she barely has anything for herself. So she definitely is consistent with her values. This may also relate to the four cardinal virtues, which can be seen in Christian theology and philosophy, which relate to fortitude, prudence, justice, and temperance. Temperance really being the most important one. It's about one's restraint and self-control and their ethics, their moral standards, which Rose definitely displays throughout this story. She's very consistent with her principles. Each time this young girl, Rose, gives one of the old women food, she really is showing the antithesis of narcissism, especially as each neighborhood gets increasingly more narcissistic. If one were to think about Rose's name, it's also found in the tarot. The rose in the tarot has four different cards, these being the fool, the magician, strength, and death. Death really being very significant. It's a reminder of one's purity, clarity, and transparency of intent. Rose definitely has this transparency that can be seen in the tarot cards. Towards the end of the story, as Rose is making her way through the rich neighborhood, trying to accomplish what the mayor had asked of her, the North Wind comes to help her. The North Wind throws her arms and a flock of birds, which are black, actually black pigeons, carry the mayor and the police over the wall into the Bronx. The North Wind helps Rose after she has helped her. Now it got me thinking of what walls represent in our society. Walls are the emblem of entrapment. Now on one side we have the wealthy and on the other side we have the impoverished. It's the little divide separating the classes. It's a separation of these neighborhoods the increasingly narcissistic and the emphatic. Another important detail was the last scene, really the last scene in this story. Rose is very disappointed and upset. She thought that what the, the mayor had asked of her, that she was going to fulfill her wishes of bringing wealth back to her neighborhood, bringing a st stable lifestyle just being able to live a normal life. So as she's sulking in her own feelings about this, she is walking along a riverside and she encounters a woman in silver known as the West Wind, which up until this point she hadn't encountered. This West Wind blows 
the water from the river all over the girl. Rose becomes drenched. What's even more interesting about this is that the water actually becomes Jules. It's almost a reward. It is a reward for Rose being how she was throughout the story. I felt that this also directly related to the Psalms and the meek shall inherit the earth. Rose has these attributes to enter the celestial kingdom. She does right by God. She does right by these angels, which are the protectors, also known as the winds. And because she did right by God, he will do right by her. As we go through the neighborhoods, we do see the escalated levels of narcissism from silver being at the lowest standpoint to gold to diamond being at the highest. The four winds really epitomize what is nar not narcissism and they minimize the traits. They are opposite to one that is narcissistic. Conclusively, Rachel Pollock successively conveys that narcissism will ultimately lead to one's demise. Thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope you liked it.